All right, this is Jimmy Cabs, Bulldozer Magazine, 5150 Interview Series here in lovely downtown gentrified Los Angeles at the Belasco Theater. Beautiful theater. I'm here with Rob DeLuca of UFO. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm very great. This is interesting. 2017, but to me, it reminds me literally of 1981. Saxon UFO touring cool, right? in America? In America. How do you like this tour? How's it going? It's great. The Saxon guys are really nice people. Uh, we share a booking agent, so it's it's very easy, easy done, you know, uh, as far as the business is concerned. And uh, the audience really enjoy both sets, so it's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. One of the things that I've always admired about UFO, especially the last 20 years, is the fact that the band has always stayed true and real. And what I mean by that is the band is not resurrecting the past. The band has always been moving forward, writing new material, playing to their top caliber in 2017. My question to you, since relatively you're one of the new members, do you think that you have a lot to do with that re-energizing, re-bringing that energy into the group? I hope so, but I, I know for a fact Vinny has. Um, the great, last, great guy. Yeah, he's a great guy and an amazing musician. The last 12 or to 14 years he's been around I'm not sure how long it's been um, the band has really reestablished established itself as, as being consistent and uh, powerful so I know he's definitely added to that and I hope I have you know I think one of the things that needs to be said is is bands of your caliber the the pioneers the forefathers your earlier catalog which is incredible work in most cases, with bands of that caliber, it tends to haunt them down the line. In other words, they seem confined. They're in a corner. Not the case with UFO. What I like about UFO now more than ever is that fresh material, fresh energy, and above all, as I mentioned before, the live show. How is all that maintained and what goes into the inner workings of UFO to keep that fire? Well, the live show is a big part of it. We're, we're definitely not an oldies act. Uh, the band is still very aggressive on stage, and um, it's a powerful, fun, exciting show for everyone. Um, I think as far as what you were saying, though, it depends on who you talk to. You know, there's some people who are always going to be wanting a certain era or, or something, and certain fans may not know that we're putting out new music all the time, you know. But as far as the band is concerned, I can only speak for, you know, what I know. The band is definitely not stuck in the past. We're, you know, they they put out an album every few years, and um, you know, and we hopefully we'll keep doing that forever. So we're definitely not stuck in the past. But, the, but having a great history is is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. You no, know? oh, it is. I mean, it's the foundation. Do you enjoy the writing process with the rest of the members of UFO? Is it still vibrant and exciting? Yeah, I mean, we we don't do it. Um, it's not like we're in the same room in the beginning. You know, we'll I'll submit ideas to we'll all submit ideas to to Phil, and he'll pick out ones that inspire him to be creative, and we'll move forward with, with them. And then we'll get in a room, um, and yeah, it's a blast. You know, being in a room, knocking around ideas with those guys. You know, it's yeah, it's a lot of fun. Imagine. It's a lot of fun. For me, one of the things that I've always admired about UFO, as I mentioned prior to you know, the live shows and being uh, uh, current is the integrity factor. In other words, UFO is UFO, whether it's from 1970 or onward. What I mean by that is you give your fan base what it is. It's the real thing. It's like Coke. It's not the new Coke. It's the real thing. Is this something that you all come together and keep in mind when you're writing new material? No, I think... You know, I, I don't really, I've only been here for nine years, so a lot of this stuff obviously predates me. But I would say that essence most likely comes from Phil Mogg the most. And it's basically, you know, a work, working class rock and roll band. And that's a great thing to aspire to be, and it's a great thing to maintain, in my opinion. Do you find it interesting that the whole legacy of UFO has not only inspired but in some cases really has given birth to completely different genres of hard rock, 
heavy metal, extremity metal, on and on and on. There's so many labels. Not to me, it drives me nuts. But at the basis of it, it all springs from UFO. Does that blow your mind? It's pretty cool. It's very it is, cool. Right? My my friend came out, Bobby Jorzombek, who I play with also, the other night, and he was he was telling um, Andy how he learned double bass to let it <laughs> roll, you know. And Bobby's a very accomplished drummer, a very amazing drummer. Um, so it's just it's cool, you know. How do you feel when you're playing out to audiences and you have both demographics of young and the older fan base? I mean, for me, one of the things that's very exciting, which we'll be discovering tonight, is listening to UFO music and being next to a person of a millennial age and then standing right next to a person that was that predates me. I think that's amazing. To be honest, I wish it was, I wish it was more half and half. There's still more older people. Um, and that's understandable. Um, I'd like to see a lot younger people, you know. Here tonight. Good, good. Let's talk about new music. You're working on new music now. I believe you'll be releasing something sometime this year, correct? Yes, but it's a covers album. Talk we, to me about that. Well, um, we just decided that uh, we've never done that. And we were touring Europe um, maybe about 2000. 15 or 16 and we were supposed to go to um, um, I think it, Russia you know we we're supposed to go to that area and then they invaded Crimea no, so want to be near we didn't want to go there no. so we we took a, uh, we skipped a week of, of touring we went to Germany and um, well this is this is a conspiracy of stars actually I'm talking about we went to Germany we we re worked up the tunes and um, rehearsed them like a real band. That was cool, but I was getting confused. So then last summer, we decided to do a covers album. Nice. And uh, all cool hard rock covers sounds really good. So that should be out sometime in 2017. Any artists that we would be surprised that you're covering? Um, the Animals. We did nice. an Animals song. Nice, wow. Wow, really? Yeah, sounds wow. really good. I like that. Really good. You're playing with Saxon. You've been touring, again, the United States on this tour. Heavy hitters. Every night. Does it bring out a, a rivalry? Does it bring out the best in you? Not at all. I mean, it was, does it bring out the best in us? I hope so. But, um, no, we, we were just, I was just hanging with Saxon ten minutes ago. There's no rivalry, you know. Just, we want them to be as great as they can be and they I'm sure they want the same for us so the word rivalry I mean do, do we want it to get better do we want to better you know our our performance every night of course but it's not a rivalry so. I don't want to use the word pioneering because to me it's been completely fucking done I want to use the word inspirational because to be able to have such a legacy and still maintain that creative fire at all top cylinders is an, is an incredible achievement. And also, it all comes down to being a live band. UFO is, has and always will be top notch. I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me. My pleasure. Thank you. UFO is going to be out in the United States with Saxon. Definitely get out and check it out. Make sure you check out the tour dates on UFO's social media pages. And we're out.